Well, hello, everybody. Um, I just want to spend a few minutes talking to you about soil classification. Uh, we've touched on some of the elements of it already, and some, so some of this will be a little bit of a refresh, um, but, uh, and then I'll go into a bit more detail on some of the soil classification systems. So we know that uh, there are lots of different soils out there. Um, they range in their properties. Uh, they have often have very different colors, uh, such as the, the ones we've got in this slide. Uh, we've got one here, which has got a, a very pale horizon and a very dark horizon above it, and then an orange one below. We've got a brownish soil over here. Uh, another one with a dark horizon and a, and a redder, redder soil underneath. So they vary in colour, they vary in depth, uh, their mineral matter, their chemistry, uh, biology, the water content and their overall composition. And they're composed of different uh, horizons. And we've, we've talked a bit about those when we've talked about soil description. Why do we then want to, to classify them? Well, like many other areas of science, we're trying to make sense of the world. We're trying to bring like things together, um, as we would do with plants or with animals. Uh, and that allows us to communicate uh, that information more efficiently. So we can then exchange knowledge with, with other people who have perhaps very similar soils. We can understand where those soils occur in the landscape and that helps us to then map soils and again make that information much more widely available. Um, it also allows us to communicate how we might manage uh, different soils because they will behave in similar ways. So it's a, a really useful thing to be able to do but how do we do it? Um, well, we're looking for common characteristics and that almost always starts with thinking about a, a soil profile. So in this case, we have one from Kenya uh, and you saw the guys digging the hole uh, in, the, in the previous uh, slide but one. Uh, and this is a, a soil which is very clay rich. Um, we call it a vertisol. Um, uh, and it's characterized by these, these very long cracks, and you can probably just pick one out running down through the slide here. There's another one running down there, and they go deep down into the soil, and those, those cracks shrink and swell as the soil dries out and then re-wets again. Um, and they're characteristic of this particular soil. Um, and, and one of the ways in which we would classify uh, this soil or name it uh, as a, a, a vertisol. So we're often looking for these characteristics and often they're associated with horizons. And many of the classification systems around the world use something called a diagnostic characteristic or a diagnostic horizon. Um, and so this might be, for example, those cracks we just saw, or it might be that a soil is very high in organic matter. It might be saturated for part of the year. Perhaps it's been ploughed and, and modified by our own activities. These are, these are horizons that would be very common in agricultural soils. Uh, and often we use a marker of phosphorus um, as, as helping us decide whether or not it's been human modified, since phosphorus doesn't occur in high concentrations in, in natural soils. Um, so it's often associated with fertilizers or manure applications. We might have cemented calcium carbonate horizons. And the picture be, behind me here is of a soil from New Mexico, which has these, these very... Uh, um, dense calcium carbonate horizons which are almost like rocks really or well, they are like rocks that you, you can't uh, break through and so they inhibit the depth of the soil and the amount of water that, uh, that, that, that the plants can, can access. In total it's around about 25 different 
uh, diagnostic horizons that appear in one of the classification systems. So it, that's the kind of diversity that we're looking at uh, in, in terms of all those, those different horizons. I don't expect you to learn them all. Um, I think it's worth having a look at some of them and thinking about them. But uh, like me, if you are ever involved in soil classification, you're going to go to a book and look them up uh, and, and check whether your soil properties match those of the, of the horizons. Just as you would if you were classifying a plant, you would go to a, a flora and look up the, the characteristics of that particular plant to try and classify it. I want to introduce you to three uh, classification systems. Um, the one on the left is the, the, the soil classification developed by the, 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 the Soil Survey of England and Wales, which, which uh, unfortunately no longer exists, um, but uh, is, is being maintained by, uh, the, by Cranfield University. Uh, and they have a nice little PDF on their website which describes the higher level um, groups of the, of the, uh, the British uh, classification. It's only two or three pages long, well worth a look. Um, the other two here are international classifications. The first is the, um, the, the UN accepted classification. Uh, it's called the World Reference Base for Soil Resources, a bit bit of a catchy title, uh, often shortened to WRB, World Reference Base. Um, so you'll often see that in, in reports. Um, and that uh, allows you to name, um, uh, I think it's around about 25 to 30 different soils around the world. Um, very commonly used in Asia, Africa, and Europe, uh, less so in the Americas. And the one that's used in the Americas is the uh, is soil taxonomy. Um, it's uh, the developed by the USDA, and there are twelve principal orders there, which you can see on the cover of this book. And you'll find a link to that that booklet in the in the um, it, it, in the references that go along with this this module. Um, I prefer the, the world reference base. Uh, I think Phil is a bit of a fan of the of soil taxonomy. Uh, so you can have a look at both of them and think a little bit about which, which one might be your preference. Um, if we focus on the, the world reference base, uh, these are the soils from the world reference base that we find in the UK. So you'll see there's a subset of that. 25 to 30 soils that occur here and that's because of the soil forming factors which are active in the UK. So you think we have a fairly um, a temperate climate, uh, we have parent materials which are very often quite young because they're often associated with superficial glacial deposits or fluvial deposits. Um, some soils are formed over bedrock but relatively few compared to, to other parts of the, of the world. Uh, and because of our glacial history, um, we're often looking at soils which are quite young in comparison with, with some of the other parts of the world. Those, those African soils you, you saw earlier are probably in the region of several million years old. Ours are in the region of thousands or tens of thousands of years old. So very different time scale. And so that restricts the diversity of soils that we encounter in the UK. And you can see uh, a list of them there with some of their basic properties. And you might want to think a little bit about once, once we're out in the field and we're looking at the soil up at Hazel Rig, which of these it might fit into. Um, and that would be something I think that would be interesting to, to have a discussion about. So how do we move from uh, from knowing what the soil is in our soil pit to thinking about how that expands across a landscape. Um, one, of the, one of the concepts that, that people use, and you may see this, in, encounter this in the literature, is to think of, of, so, of there being a kind of a basic unit of, of, of the soil. 
and that is a, a pedon, rhymes with head on if you want to uh, you want to remember how to pronounce it and that's basically a unit of soil which is roughly one to two square meters and then goes down to the base of the soil profile um, and we then put those together and the the, the, the classical term is polypedon okay so plenty of you know a, a group of pedons stitched together and once we we then accumulate them into like soils we might then have a boundary which we call the soil series boundary and if you go to any detailed soil map of the UK you will find uh, lines on it which reflect uh, the soil series that you may encounter. So that's at a scale of 1 to 50,000 or better. Um, soil scientists will argue about whether one soil fits in one soil series or another soil series and where that line should be drawn on the landscape. So there's quite a lot of sort of variation around the edge of this as to whether a soil is really one soil series or another. Uh, and and often, as I say, it provokes discussion in the field as to exactly which soil you have in, in front of you. Um, but you can see here where, where we're, I've drawn some boundaries on this landscape and, and they might be different soil series, so they're a group of like soils. In the UK, we then use soil associations and you'll see a map of soil associations in the, in the, uh, in the practical that we'll... Um, which we'll share with you. And soil, soil associations are groups of soil series that occur across a landscape. Now, I've got a diagram here taken from the landers.org website and we'll also show you some of these diagrams in, in some of the, 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 the book guides that we have. Um, and they show how soil series occur across a landscape. And you can see the boundaries here. Uh, you can see numbers there that, that refer to these different soil series. So here we have, oh sorry, not different soil series, sorry, different soil associations. Um, and so you can see here up near Penrith that we have a range of different soil associations that occur and they occur associated with different elements of the landscape. Uh, so you can see this one in the middle, 713G, it's the Brickfield 3 Association, and those are drumlins, so they're, they're very much like the kind of features that we get around the university in Lancaster, caused by the, 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 the ice flowing over the, over the surface of the land and leaving these kind of uh, egg-shaped deposits behind. Um, and be interested to see whether we also have uh, 713G Brickfield uh, 3 Association uh, when we look at the which soil association our soil at Hazel Rig sits within. So I've kind of drawn this out in terms of the UK uh, soil landscape if you like. Um, the We have start with individual soils we group them into soil series. Soil series are members of soil associations. Uh, so we, we, we would have different soil series within our Brickfield 3 Association. And then at the highest level in the UK, we have something called soil scapes. And that's a kind of a simplified version of the soil associations. And you can find a map of soil scapes on the, uh, the Landis website. Okay, and that gives you very general information about the different soils and where they occur. At the global level, probably the most widely used uh, web resource is the soilgrids.org, um, and that's the world reference base world soil map, and you can see it there in front of you. And if you go on to soil grids, you can zoom in, uh, you can pick up on particular spots in, in, on the globe and zoom in and see which soils you have there and, and also map some of their soil properties. This is largely produced using something called digital soil mapping 
which relies on using AI type technology to map soils based on observations that have been made around the globe. Um, it is of various, variable accuracy, I would say. So you, at this level, I think it's probably very useful and you get a very nice broad overview of where soil, different soils occur. Uh, as you zoom in, it start, tends to struggle a little bit more in certain areas. So you might want to zoom in on Lancaster and on uh, Hazelrig and see uh, you know, the kind of, um, kind of soils that the World Soil Map says that you have and whether that agrees with your observations. Worth having a look at, I think. Okay, so that's a kind of whistle-stop tour through soil classification. Um, I would just like to recommend a little bit of reading for you. Um, for the UK classification, it's worth having a look at the PDF I recommended. You'll find that gives you a very brief overview, just, just a couple of pages really of, of, of reading there. With not a lot of detail, but it will give you a feel for the range of soils that we have here in the UK. And then uh, for the world reference base, there isn't a lot out there really that gives a kind of very basic introduction to it. Um, so you might want to just have a look at the manual for the world reference base. Uh, you can download it on following this link. Um, and maybe just taking in the, the introduction to the manual uh, and just scanning just to get a feel for the range of soils. But it's a big, it's a big chunky volume and I wouldn't recommend that you try and read it, read it all by, by any means. So just have a, have a look at the, the intro for that. For soil taxonomy, there are actually a couple of chapters which you could look at, which, which detail that in a bit more detail. And again, um, I'm not necessarily expecting you to, to remember all the different horizons and the different diagnostic characteristics that they describe, nor the different soils. Um, the one I would probably go to is, is, is number five on this list, which is in is chapter three in Brady and Vild's 2016 uh, volume. You can find a link to that uh, below, it's online. Um, the first kind of like two pages of that chapter give an introduction and cover some of the concepts that we've talked about in terms of source series, pedons, etc. Um, and that's quite useful um, revision. Um, and then it gives a bit more detail on the on the US classification. Again, worth scanning, but don't worry about the detail. If you really want to get into the detail, then you could uh, look at the soil, cla soil taxonomy classification, which you'll find. Uh, in uh, following the link uh, in number four on this list um, and the other chapter that you could also look at would be from Soil Science Simplified um, which again talks about the, the soil taxonomy um, the, the soil taxonomy system both those are US uh, three and five are US books they don't kind of have a bigger a bigger kind of picture of what might else might be out there in the world so um, when you're reading them, do have that in mind that there are other systems that people are using, sometimes quite widely across, across, the, across the world. Okay, so that's a, a whistle-stop tour of, of soil, uh, soil classification. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to, to thinking about uh, which classification system might suit our soil best once we're out in the field.